going to become the supreme effort facing the new world order. Now we've been uh, in a track race, that's the only way to describe it, and as with any track race we've had to keep pace with our enemy. Now if you've ever been involved with track or cross country at first what you'll do is pace and identify the capabilities of your enemy and of course you're busy maintaining pace and speed with him. You're not trying to overrun, you're not trying to outtake, but you also don't want to get behind. Well, we have many assets and many resources within the Patriot Movement and obviously Videotapes and audio communication are one of our best. They're not controlled by the regular media. They're not one of the centrally uh, manipulated sources that the other side can control at this time. But if you saw the, saw the State of the Union address, of course, only a few short days ago, then you will know that we're now talking about things like the V chip. Technology, which of course before was being laughed at, is now being openly presented across the United States. A veritable plethora of data is now available and before you, and we're going to be demonstrating, of course, in this tape, uh, this presentation, virtually all of the information that, of course, was discussed in American Peril 1 and 2, and in 3 is now the reality of America with a K. Uh, example, and of course this is happening only in the last year and a half to two years, uh, we have the Atlanta Constitution, Friday, May 6, 1994, and amazingly enough, on the front page, what should show up but sea change in the crime debate? Oh, I should remind you that uh, unlike the first two tapes and, of course, our original works, uh, the crime bill passed, along with many other pieces of legislation, which, if you'll recall, both with the Clintonistas, Bill Clinton and the Hillarite, along with uh, George Bush, stated would never take place in America in our lifetime. Well, sea change is an interesting phrase that you're going to see crop up all over the country, but in most cases, as with this Atlanta Constitutional uh, article, there is nothing with regard to a reference in the body of this article that will tell you anything about sea change, what it means, what it's about, what it has to do with. Uh, one of the reasons for this, well, amazingly enough, what we have is a situation where the key phrase itself was enough for the other side to coordinate their resources, their operations. What have they accomplished, of course, in the last three years? When I say they, let's use the proper term, New World Order, and don't worry, we're going to validate it throughout this entire piece. Amazingly enough, we have seen, for instance, the World Trade Organization and final act embodying the results of the Uruguay Round of the Multilateral Trade Negotiations, also known, of course, as GATT. Now, while GATT is not obsolete, remember, GATT was only a step in the right direction towards the New World Order, as our opposition would say. The founding works, of course, were done over a period of 20 years, and the objective was to ease us into the New World Order. Uh, the New World Order crowd themselves couldn't slap us into position. They had to, of course, boil us like a frog, taking their time and adding more and more legislation. Well, GATT actually, though, is not, all, is not the only issue we have to deal with now, for we now have the World Trade Organization. Both GATT and NAFTA's mission were to, of course, manipulate and orchestrate the U.S. American economy in such a way that they would be able to, uh, shall we say, usurp our own system against us. Uh, the World Trade Organization is going to be the final word. There will be no debate. There is no discussion, as you all know, and there is much information that can be accessed for both the experienced and the novice investigator. 
And the World Trade Organization, well, it's one step in the right direction, as both George Bush and Bill Clinton stated. Many other pieces, though, can demonstrate where we're headed. And probably the next best example, which, by the way, of course, we were also told would never pass in our lifetime, is, as you can see, November 19th, Legislative Day, November 2nd, 1993, ordered and printed as passed in the Senate of the United States. This is the Omnibus Crime Package, ladies and gentlemen. And this is, of course, the assault weapons ban, uh, the first inklings of the new anti-terrorism legislation, and, of course, was based upon, well, as we have demonstrated in the past, Public Law 100-690. We can reference these texts and progressively, like an archaeologist, peel back different layers to show you where we've come from and, of course, by doing that, demonstrate where we are headed. There is great, there's a great deal of debate right now over, of course, the path that should be taken. And even in the New World Order's ranks, we're seeing a tremendous amount of work that is being befuddled by debate, in a way. Now there's also a fear on the part of the New World Order crowd because a new formula has had, has had to develop with regard to actions inside the United States. The Patriot Movement itself, ladies and gentlemen, has been very successful. In fact, so much so that we have virtually changed the path of the New World Order. We cannot stop it, so instead we are deflecting its energies. Now, does that mean that we are going to give up and defeat? No, we first have to identify the threat. We've had to demonstrate to many people time and again the capabilities, the information, the resources that are on hand. And then, rather than just whining about the problem, we are also demonstrating solutions. Now, make no mistake about it, and I'm never going to back down on this, we fully support the militia concept and are growing at a regular rate. But in addition to the militia, we must also be involved legislatively. We must be involved at the local level. Government, especially good government, is crucial. Now, nature abhors a vacuum, and one of the things the New World Order first would like to do is create chaos. Look to your regular newspapers today, the controlled media. Take a look at Communist News Network, CNN. Take a look at ABC, NBC, CBS. What are we seeing right now? Well, what we're seeing are a series of preambles to the crises to come. Mexico on the horizon. Canada in revolt with Quebec. Uh, an entire scenario with, of course, uh, everything from a, a desperate attempt to try and fabricate race wars in the United States, uh, including, of course, uh, actions in the inner cities and, of course, animosities generated by the controlled media. It's our objective and the mission of the Patriot Movement and, of course, those people facing the New World Order to educate the many people that are out there waiting, and that's what your task is. Uh, we've challenged many people time and again, and, in fact, the first purpose of American Peril, which was not copyrighted, was to educate individuals, to force them to think, to challenge what it was that was being said. Many people, of course, go into denial. Probably one of you that are listening right now would be the first nodding your head and admitting that. Well, we have a mountain of books. We have a mountain of legislation. Most of it can't be put on a, on a, on a, a single spool over a few hours. But what we're going to do is demonstrate again just exactly how far the enemy has come. And when I say the enemy, I mean the New World Order. Now, let me give you a good example. In their own works, and there are many to choose from, we have, of course, the NARC officer, official publication of the International Narcotics Enforcement Officers Association, Incorporated. This is September to October of 1995, and of course, Robert M. Morgenthau, District Attorney, New York County, is the cover child of the day, poster child, if you will. Well, what was so important about this particular issue? Well, ladies and gentlemen, Lucid and the Counterterrorism Act of 1995. This particular piece is crucial because it demonstrates national ID card concepts, uh, working into the program and integrating the international perspective with regard to uh, fingerprints, photographs, ID, the workplace, and of course, allowing other agencies, not American agencies, to access the database here in the United States. The NCIC has been compromised by the present administration, with including the FBI director, Mr. Freya, who is now allowing the Soviets, oh, correction, I'm sorry, uh, the Russians, to uh, access our entire database at their discretion. Now, doesn't somebody have a problem with this? There are very few, if any, KGB personnel who are, shall we say, standing in breadlines. 
So what we have is a problem where the same butchers, who have been killing people in Russia for well over 70 years, responsible for more than three specific purges, in some cases with over 20 million people at a time dying, these people and the ones who were trained by them are now the individuals who can access these communications nets and this data that we're seeing today. Is there a problem here? Well, absolutely. What we have is a situation where through gradualism, we're merging with the Soviet. Oh, correction again, the Russians. Hey, is this a problem? Well, for me it is, and many other Americans who, with any common sense, can see that there are difficulties on the horizon. First of all, we're seeing the rumblings of the same old Soviet, and I will not correct myself with regard to that. Uh, we are seeing now the same old Russia reappearing on the horizon, just over the edge, like a sunrise. The first inkling of it can be seen in the sky above, long before the actual direct light hits your face. The Russians, of course, are using the Glasnost and Perestroika system. I notice that you haven't heard that for quite some time. Well, we're into one of the many Glasnost, and of course, Perestroika is an old tool to acquire technical knowledge and data material information, and uh, not the least of which is also additional funding to keep international communism in motion. Inter international communism, by the way, is not dead. Uh, but remember, it is only one of several of the different isms that we have to concern ourselves with. All of them, though, are socialism. Now, I'll challenge you as we did the first time to think back to your days in school and erase a few things and start from scratch. Number one, we're dealing with national socialism. We're dealing with Fabian socialism and social communism. You'll notice the key word, social or socialism. This enemy, as Orwell pointed out, and probably his best, his best uh, single paragraph that explicitly describes the New World Order as we are going to experience is, Big Brother is not communism. Big Brother is not fascism. Big Brother is socialism stretching on for as far as the mind can see. Imagine, if you will, a boot on the face of humanity forever. Well, it's our objective, and I'm going to demonstrate here, of course, very quickly, the fact that there are many, many different assets and resources that you can draw from to identify the actions that are involved with regard to the New World Order crowd. Why is it we're seeing them in your face today? Now, they haven't been this bold for almost a year and a half, just since, the, uh, of course, the Davidian attack in Waco, and uh, as they were, of course, feeling their oats with victory, the aggressor forces made the point of saying, well, yeah, we are the New World Order. We are going to do this. What are you going to do, to do about us? We demonstrated this. The militias, of course, many people look for a solution, and the militia was there. Uh, they also turned to our people that are legal specialists. Uh, we've been attacking on all fronts. So contrary to the controlled media, we are in the courts. But we're also demonstrating now that our aggressor is not listening to even the legislation that they've passed. One of the reasons, well, we've tried to force their feet to the fire and demonstrate that they will not follow the guidelines that have been laid down or, worse still, while they have passed legislation against both you and myself, they've also heavily limited any, any accountability on the part of the agencies that are performing these actions. In almost every case, both the Senate, the House, the President, and the alphabet soup groups are exempt from any of these restrictions. So while you and I, of course, uh, have a veritable plethora of books that would fill this room several times over of laws and legislation that uh, control our lives on a daily basis, there is nothing that we can do, basically, uh, to directly affect these creatures. These laws have become the insulation, the protection that has allowed them to continue with their deviance inside government or inside the beltway. Now let me give you a little example here very quickly. And this is something that, again, forgive, the quality is a little different from what you might expect, but I think we can get the point across with this. The New World Order, if you'll recall, approximately a year and a half and two years ago, uh, they started to denounce the fact that it even existed. They tried the denial operation that uh, is typical you know, over the last 30 to 40 years and ridicule of anybody who brought it up. But remember, yes, George Bush did coin the phrase, but many, many other parties are still using it. It's just that it's being avoided like the plague. The press has been told if you use it, you lose your job. It's that simple. Well, apparently, uh, the Hilton is forging ahead, though. And this particular picture is a, the United States flag, as you may notice, to the left. Oop, inappropriate. The United Nations flag flying in the middle, and the state flag in this case. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we're not seeing this in one location, but many locations. And this is not overseas. This is inside the United States. Now, the United Nations flag is a foreign power. 
The United Nations, it represents a foreign entity, a creature that is alien to our Constitution and Bill of Rights. In fact, for all practical purposes, the United Nations abhors our Constitution and Bill of Rights. If they had their way tomorrow, it would be gone. Problem is, again, boiling a frog. What you're seeing is a situation where the New World Order crowd is making every effort to baffle us with the proverbial uh, cow manure and uh, move us on down the road to the next phase. Why are we seeing uh, what seems to be contradiction on the part of the New World Order right now, though, too? Well, not all the players are, uh, shall we say, on the same song sheet. Many of the expendables are now being used for just that, expendable actions where they are going to take heat and eventually be brushed aside. Remember that since the New World Order does use the pyramid, I will remind you that the capstone is very small. There isn't a whole lot of room at the top, and they are not going to share power, contrary to popular belief. So one of the first and best tools used by the New World Order is what? Well, greed and avarice. Uh, also, of course, uh, they have a tendency to become a magnet for the mercenary that is in many of the people uh, in bureaucracy. Again, we'll turn back to the uh, Ruby Ridge uh, scenario and also Waco and uh, the Waco massacre. What kind of people could they find and how long did it take for them to manipulate and create the mechanism that they are using now to oppress the American people? And what did I say oppress? I'm absolutely correct with regard to that. The legislation that we're going to demonstrate and what we've already shown you, ladies and gentlemen, is volumes. In many cases, the sad part and the fact that it has been admitted even on national television and on uh, CNN and also C-SPAN is that almost every legislator who voted on the subjects have never read the subjects. Now think about that. Now of course they have conditioned many Americans to contracts in this way but sadly enough what we have is a situation where people who are determining not only the fate of our lives but the fate of the nation for the rest of its future don't have the foggiest idea what type of legislation they're running down the throats of the American people. Now I'll add in a little bit of another formula which at the moment may be a little difficult for some people to understand who haven't had the time to bring themselves up to speed but how is it that they can pass some of this legislation which seems very draconian or, or Orwellian and that is the correct term how is it they can pass it and appear to get away with it? Some cases, as with the president, using executive orders. Well, you've also heard a new term with regard to legislation that most people in the past had buried, the War Powers Act. Presidential executive orders, ladies and gentlemen, are acts of martial law. And it can be demonstrated by many, many fine authors across the nation. Uh, it, hard to find in some libraries today because they're being purged. But the War Powers Act and many of the other legislative pieces that came out of 1933, ladies and gentlemen, have created a state of national emergency and crisis. What was used to get us into Bosnia, which of course now some of your sons and daughters, some of your cousins, some of your children are now participating in, well, it was basically the War Powers Act and the capability of the president to override our Constitution because, for all practical purposes, our Constitution does not exist. Now, most people would jump at that and say, well, I've heard the term used. Yes, you've heard the term used. Shallow words, hollow words, which have nothing to do with the statute laws and with the edicts that are being laid down by the present administration and many administrations before it. Now, one person or another has been like a passive uh, majesty, a king who's been one, one being more benevolent than the other, have perhaps not written as many laws or have tried to, shall we say, slide them under the table. But the fact of the matter is, and it can be, there can be no dis disputing this, that the New World Order is using what is the equivalent to monarchical executive order to get the job done. Why does it seem, and I'm going to pick a nerve here, why does it seem that the other side is in a big hurry to get the job done? No matter who you are that's out there right now listening, you and I both know that something is wrong. Even if you're totally ignorant, one of the reasons that you're listening right now is because your life, something in your life has presently been picked, has been finally touched by the New World Order's activities. And of course, at first being in denial, well, it can't really be happening to me, it's just one person. Oh, well, oh, it's my neighbor too. Well, well, it's just the two of us. Well, it's other people in my industry. It's other people at the workplace. Wait a minute, I guess it's more than just a few of us. Well, I've talked to Frank on the other side of the country and the same thing's happening. I guess it's not just regional. I guess it's not just in our state. It's all over the country. Oops. The fact of the matter is, again, through regional compartmentalization of communications, specifically the controlled media, most people have been very slow to accept the idea that something is wrong in this country. 
We've had the benefit of, uh, over the last two to three years of traveling to 44, uh, now 45, of the 50 states of the Union, ladies and gentlemen. We have a chance to sit down in many cases and talk with the people and, and experience what they experience in their own eyes. It's important that you do that too. And what we're going to try to do and what we have been doing is we've been working as a witness for you. We've been collecting the information. We've been talking to the people that have been talking the talk, and as they say, walking the walk, who have been in the face of government, who have been involved with government, who have been involved with the military, law enforcement, also who have worked to try and change things. And they understand full well who they're facing. In fact, I might point something out, and there's a book sitting here on the desk that is probably the best example. It's Tragedy and Hope by Carol Quigley. This man directly affected and was directly involved with, well, of all people, Bill Clinton. He will admit that uh, Mr. Quigley was one of his mentors. Now, is this brought out uh, regularly by the press? Is there any real biography done on the education of Bill Clinton? Have you seen anything? No, you haven't and you won't. There's a reason. It is a rather tainted past. There are many different activities that are involved that, uh, with regard to this administration, that they definitely do not want to, uh, how shall we put it, dig back up or pull out of the closet as in skeletons. It's not an uncommon situation that we're dealing with whereby the New World Order is virtually, uh, shall we say, incapable of covering its path. We have enough evidence, and in fact, the only thing that can be done is to virtually ignore it. Well, that's where the alternate press and the patriot press come in and all the works that are being done right now. We've been successful at demonstrating, for instance, through people who are doing great works that, uh, well, Mr. Quigley, uh, as with many of the New World Order crowd, not all of them are as clandestine as one might think. In fact, one of the complaints by many of the New World Order types, such as Mr. Quigley, is that uh, there is definitely a conspiracy. There is definitely an effort to impose world government. His complaint in Tragedy and Hope, which Bill Clinton, by the way, has read, and of course, remember, Mr. Quigley was one of his instructors, his complaint is that they weren't open enough, that they didn't explain what their program was about and why not show it to the people of the world and, well, just sell it out in the open. There's a reason. Number one, the agenda that is being presented and the actual agenda, which can be demonstrated in many other works that are not given necessarily to the whole of the public, show that there are two totally different worlds. The view that is warm and fuzzy for the public consumption is designed to trap and ensnare us. The actual agenda, which we have seen time and again with tyrants, monarchs, and other pharaohs and government mechanisms in the past, is pure centralized tyranny. That's why the legislation that we are seeing is in existence. That's why you are being bombarded constantly. Many patriots, and yourself included, might almost seem bewildered at times because well, you're fighting a piece of legislation, you seem to beat it, and just as quickly as you've spent your resources, your, your money, your time, just as quickly as you have defeated the first one, there is yet another wave facing you again. In many cases, because of your success, you will find that they use clandestine operations to pass that legislation. Now, isn't that fascinating? When we originally did American Peril, I tried to point out the first, uh, our first work, that while you might see one piece of legislation, there would be yet another floating along parallel to it, which was virtually identical. It would receive no publicity, and typically, as is the case, and we are now seeing this, of course, with the new anti-terrorism bill, that while people are calling in and commenting on one piece of legislation, it is already gone, and yet a second one has appeared in its place, in many cases, with no identifying uh, factors, and with no information passed on by the legislature, the legislator that you're talking to. Isn't that amazing? Well, that's no accident because, again, the ring knockers, the people behind the scenes, ladies and gentlemen, are pressuring all of their puppets. And there is a tremendous effort, again, to get the job done. Don't you wish we had people that day dedicated? Well, guess what? We do. And one of the reasons that they have been askew in their timetable is because of you, the people sitting next to you right now, and many of the unseen patriots, the men and women across the nation of all ages, all races, all groups, who have been in the middle of this fight while some of you have been asleep. Well, now that you're waking up, now that you're coming up out of your chair, don't be discouraged by the fact that you're going to come up with the exact same solutions that most of them did. I'm going to call my representative. I'm going to pass legislation. We'll go out there and change things. Don't worry. It has been done before, and we still need to make that effort. But make no mistake about it, the other side is still working inexorably uh, towards a specific purpose. Confiscation of arms, 
the destruction of your sovereignty, the destruction of your freedom, the elimination of history books, and the histories that presently exist so that they can virtually rewrite the globe. And if you don't think that this has happened, I guess I will challenge you just to take a look at recent events. Desert dust, as we call it, which is known as Desert Storm, is still probably the best example. Much of what was done during Desert Storm was pure and absolute propaganda. It is now being admitted so two and three years after the fact. But at the time we were challenging people to look beyond the veil, beyond all of the mysticism that was being created, beyond all of the rhetoric, to the core issues of what was going on. Did we have a reason for being there? Well, if you take a look at the end results, Saddam Hussein is still in power. People are now buying oil from him. We had casualties on both sides. It was suffering for the Iraqi people, and it still is, by the way. But the ring knockers, they had a separate agenda. We did not go into Iraq. We did not invade it and, shall we say, cleanse it of that, that scourge known as Saddam Hussein. In fact, it's obvious that there were many behind the tables deals, part of them done with legislation such as we've dem demonstrated here, which guarantees that those tyrants who are in power will stay in power. And if given the opportunity, new tyrants will be brought to bear. Now, switching to yet another part of the globe, only a short distance from desert dust, we now have the Yugoslavian affair. Now, why do we bring this up? Well, what was the excuse going into Bosnia most recently? Treaty. Treaties, ladies and gentlemen, do not abrogate or override the Constitution, and in fact are null and void if they are in contradiction in any way, shape, or form to the Constitution and the Bill of Rights, and of course are enumerated also in the Declaration of Independence. I might add that there's a tremendous amount of work which you need to be challenged to, which has to do with, for instance, our Founding Fathers' works. Let me challenge you this today. I want you to go to the library and find a copy of George Washington's farewell address, if you can find a copy. And what I want you to do is read it, and then I want you to use it as a litmus and place it against the events that we are seeing in the Middle East right now and in the Far Eastern Mediterranean. Is Bill Clinton actually following the guidelines of the Founding Fathers as sometimes he tries to lay claim to? Read Jefferson's works. One of the things that was a concern of all of these men, having understood the British Empire, which if you remember, the sun never set upon at that time, nor today, uh, the, the dangers of interacting treaties and how they would be attempted, or how people would attempt to use them to override our governing documents. This is not possible. But through the dumbing down of America, the lack of education with regard to understanding our form of government and what it's all about, and with a failure to properly demonstrate to people how good government should work, what can we expect from the next generation coming up, but what we've already seen and are seeing demonstrated right now? The challenge, the real challenge to all of the patriots that are presently in line and on service is to double their numbers yet again, and the only way that we can do that is through education. Don't just turn to the people who are already in the choir people. The important challenge now, the most important and difficult challenge, is turning to the mainstream America that is out there waiting and listening. They've got a pain here. They can feel it. There's a grumbling in the tummy, as they say. One of the reasons, well, as I said before, everybody's being touched by this. We have an opportunity, and it's golden, the chance to seize the moment, <laughs> well, I'll use Bill Clinton's phrase, to seize the moment. It's been used in the past. The term is not new. But for us, because of this track race that we are in, and keeping abreast and pace with the enemy, we have a chance now to be one step ahead and one step farther down the road than they are because of this hollow that's being created. Nature abhors a vacuum, ladies and gentlemen. It's time for you to rise up out of your chair, get away from the sitcoms, the soap operas, turn off Horrendous Revolver and all of the others that are out there, and get on with life. Get away from the internet and get out there and interact with people. That's where the important action is taking place. And you have a chance to do it. Now, I challenge you to this because we're not going to be around forever. In fact, one of the things you should remember more so than anything else is we're all mortal. We also have to be able to pass the flag on to the next generation and give them the opportunity to develop, the opportunity to grow. But that also has to be done utilizing a free society. And the New World Order, Bill Clinton and the government that you're seeing right now, has nothing to do with freedom. And certainly, well, shall we say, is nothing short of a dark and sinister New World Order. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I guess one of the first things that we should do at this particular point in time is qualify the New World Order. 
You might recall that about the time of the Oklahoma bombing and that particular media fiasco, which I will argue uh, till I'm cold in the grave, was uh, completely fabricated by either elements of the New World Order inside the government or specific elements of the government along with, of course, the controlled media. In either case, the controlled media obviously had a battery of particular propaganda pieces generated and ready to go canned for this particular mechanism that they put online. Now, you might recall a term, of course, they kept ridiculing us over, New World Order. Well, of course, only George Bush had used this particular term. Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we're going to demonstrate uh, today that uh, the term is not only common, but it is an integral part of the overall program. It is crucial. Both the, what are well called the inner party members and the outer party members need these key words. Like sea change, which was demonstrated much earlier, the New World Order agenda is the order agenda, period. It is the mechanism that they must use. Now, it may be a facade, and my personal position is, once the game is over, if the New World Order wins, well, I think the name will change and their real titles will come to pass once again. Referring to the first tape, though, and our first works with American Peril, I want to point something out. We had some comments that were made, for instance, about mechanisms that supposedly did not exist. More than sufficient documentation was available at the time. One of the complaints being that, well, how can we show that there, for instance, is an MJTF or FinCEN or, well, United Nations forces in America? Equipment, technology, resources, this just couldn't happen in our lifetime. Well, first of all, let me point out some basic problems with bureaucracy is that it is constantly changing. That is a fact. Uh, you might recall that BATF, Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms, is now known as ATF. Why? Well, they like threes, first of all, I guess. It's just easier to remember. Click, click, click. Uh, but ATF, Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms, falls in line with the concept of three letters, FBI, KGB. Oops, I'm sorry. The KGB is now the FSK, by the way. Uh, you have DEA, uh, EPA. Well, there's a whole plethora of alphabet soup mechanisms. But uh, you cannot argue that at one time the ATF was known as the BATF. Have there been changes in bureaucracy? Most assuredly and intentionally, there is a mutation, a progression towards a final agenda or a specific mission statement that has already been established in the past and which is being progressed towards. Now, we originally demonstrated the MJTF as a mechanism uh, which was virtually across the nation. It was argued that it isn't. Well, right here before you, this particular document which we're going to present, which was received on March 28th of 1994 by Senator Wellborn's office from uh, John Engler, Governor, of course, Department of State Police, and it gives, of course, the pertinent address. This particular document dated March 22nd, 1994, addressed to the Honorable Jack Wellborn, State Senator, 13th District, P.O. Box 30036, Lansing, Michigan, 48909. We won't worry about the rest of the digits. Dear Mr. Wellborn, thank you for your letter of March 10th, 1994. I'll save you some space here. We do have, excuse me, 22 existing multi-jurisdictional task forces which predominantly investigate and, of course, target narcotics trafficking conspiracies. However, in the body of this work, it will also admit to the fact that there are special task forces and elements that are part of the MJTF throughout the state of Michigan. Ladies and gentlemen, this single sheet notes that, and again I'll point out, 22 multi-jurisdictional task force units in the state of Michigan alone. Hmm, isn't that fascinating? Well, it should point to uh, and demonstrate that if there are 22 in Michigan, which is not the most populous state of the nation, how many MJTF police units are there in New York? How many in Los Angeles? Hmm, Miami. What about Seattle, Texas, North and South Dakota? We should be able to get an overall survey, but if you'll recall, and one of the arguments made is that first there was absolute denial that the MJTF existed. Now there is a further extrapolation of the uh, name, and we now know that there is, of course, also JTF. What have they done? Take one letter off, make it simpler. Remember, the alphabet soup mechanisms work in threes. So what we're seeing now is a reconfiguration of the title, and we're going to demonstrate also with many other works tonight that, uh, well, they're just cropping up everywhere with information in their own media resources. Also remember that training is required. 
and a good portion of the information with regard to uh, data on the MJTF, on FinCEN, Financial Crimes Enforcement Network, and many of the others are now publicly available and have even been mentioned in the general media. Now, I might remind you that at first, there was positive, absolute denial, and even amongst other media sources that they controlled, the New World Order crowd made an attempt to try and, of course, ridicule or, of course, make uh, sport or fun of the people who were talking about these subjects. And yet, today, 1995-96, uh, in the last six months to one year, we have seen virtually every element and mechanism of the original work, American Peril, come to pass. From the currency change to United Nations open exposure, both in the United States, Canada, and of course now globally, uh, we're seeing the MJTF in your neighborhood, in your backyard. From Cleveland to Chicago, from New Orleans to Miami, from New York, yes, even to Los Angeles. The MJTF, or the JTF, Joint Task Force Mechanism, and many others are now being developed. Oh, and by the way, did I mention there are yet new combinations that have been created? Why? Well, there's another thing. Counterintelligence operations, ladies and gentlemen. We have accessed and demonstrated a, a, a window of history, if you will. This doesn't mean that things aren't changing. They must. Just as if you've ever been in the military, they will continue to alter the names, patches, insignia, and heraldry of military units to confound the, the enemy. So the New World Order crowd has to constantly be changing the battlefield for their own purposes, mostly to befuddle the common population and maintain a level of terror. Why do they do this? Well, obviously the New World Order crowd doesn't have superior numbers and doesn't necessarily even have superior technology. But what it does have is one heck of a propaganda arm. Both Mao Zedong, many of the ancient writings, uh, and of course authors in uh, China, but also in Europe, and even in the United States, will explain to you in a military posture, the very first weapon used is propaganda. And of course the objective is to convince your enemy that it is futile to resist, you will be absorbed. By doing this, a good portion or a percentage of the aggressor force you're facing can be neutralized. That is exactly what the purpose is behind the controlled media and why information has been denied to the American people. Now, is the JTF the only issue that we're concerned with? Well, I brought up the term New World Order. This is a military document. Actually, this is an official publication, Military Review, the Professional Journal of the United States Army, December 1992. And ladies and gentlemen, it's a puzzle. Well, you'll notice I'm circling, and you might look to, of course, the center, and you'll find the pivot of the clock. The center of the puzzle is the United Nations. But first, we must enter by the proper door. And so, on December 1992, the proper entrance point of the puzzle would be New World Order. This wasn't made up by the Patriot Movement. This document can be found in your library locally, along with many other documents that support the same view. And again, this is 1992. You'll now notice that most recently, and I think probably the best example is the tape that you're going to be watching here, a small excerpt of, with uh, one of our representatives from the Marine Corps at Operation, well, we call it Nifty Nugget. In reality, the exercise was known as Cooperative Nugget. Uh, at this point in time, you're going to now hear from, uh, I believe it's uh, General Sheehan, who makes a point of explaining to everybody just exactly what these exercises are all about. You who are here today are observing an absolutely historic event. The soldiers that you see before you represent not the past, but rather the future. It is through exercises such as this that truly we can create a new world order in which the militaries of the world can work in co coordination and cooperation to build a better peace. Well, thank you very much, General, for that, uh, well, New World Order commentary. Uh, as we can demonstrate, ladies and gentlemen, we're not just seeing this in one part of the country. We are seeing this all over the nation and around the world. Both Mr. Aristide in Haiti, uh, gentlemen across Europe right now, are touting the New World Order left and right. Uh, there's a reason for this. After all, again, we have forced the New World Order's hand. We have slowed down the agenda here in America, and many people around the world are taking note. Now... New World Order is a key catchphrase, and of course, as you saw, the General's comments were being given at a particular event. What was it? Well, Cooperative Nugget 95, Partnership for Peace. Uh, well, peace of what? Well, peace of Texas, peace of Pennsylvania, peace of Florida. 
I imagine a little piece of all republics and commonwealths of these United States. And that's why uh, we've promoted the militia, well, for a reason. We see much more than just this. There have been actions of this type across the United States. This was just the first of many that were being given public attention to test the waters and see how stupid we really are. Uh, it might be noted, of course, ladies and gentlemen, this was purely a United Nations exercise. For those of you who do doubt that, well, there's ample examples of what was missing from the official releases of the Department of Defense. Several different pay tapes were done by DOD propaganda personnel, and in the upcoming footage, which you're going to see gradually working onto your screen, there is much that was missing from these tapes. One of the best examples being, of course, the fact that almost all of the props, almost all of the insignia and heraldry that was tied into it had to do with United Nations military operations. Uh, from the United Nations National Police Force to, of course, uh, ground operations for search and seizure of firearms. Well, 14 plus nations were involved, possibly others in a covert fashion on the sly, giving support uh, to this particular action and also activities that took place at Fort Riley, Kansas and other quiet exercises in the Carolinas, Florida, Texas, California, and of course in Washington State, and not the least of which would also be other nations such as Canada, Cambodia, oh that's right, the war games in Yugoslavia too, uh, well whatever you'd like to call them. Remember with Korea it was not a war, it was a conflict, so I'm sure they'll come up with a more appropriate name. We wouldn't want to, well, sully the waters with uh, words that actually mean what they say. Uh, with Cooperative Nugget, it can be demonstrated, and I think we're going to uh, show you, uh, shall we say, a few knocks on the door in the twilight hours. Alexander Solzhenitsyn spoke about such activities and reminded people that if they had simply waited for them in the twilight hours when they did arrive and stopped them in their tracks, the bloody machine would have ground to a halt. Well, what you're seeing now, ladies and gentlemen, are shades and visions of things to come. That's right, National Police Force, and what do those armbands say? United Nations. Well, search and seizure and force operations of this type are what were being demonstrated at Fort Polk, and every international element that was there got a chance to practice. A little point that should be made is that when the British were involved with this particular phase of the exercise, and they entered the structure, they wouldn't let the camera crews enter with them. Why? Well, the policy of the British forces entering any structures, homes, businesses, or whatever, is to kill everybody. Men, women, cats, dogs, kids, everybody. Now, can this be demonstrated? Well, for your benefit, we have a couple of hours of footage that was done by different crews who were live and on location during Operation Cooperative Nugget. And one of the complaints is that during the British phase and one of the Russian phases, when these particular search and seizure actions were taking place, well, they didn't want the camera crews there to shoot what was really being shot. Uh, when asked where the prisoners were that would normally be taken out of the building during this phase, the American instructors commented rather quietly that there were no prisoners. Now, ladies and gentlemen, remember that the British, the French, and many other parties are key individuals participating in this New World Order police force. Now, Nifty Nugget, as we call it, was just a small example of, as we said, of visions of things to come. Well, there's much more on the horizon, and United Nations equipment has been spotted, supposedly not verified, and not identified across the United States. Well, let me help you with some of this. We have documented uh, evidence from all over the United States, from Alabama to Mississippi, from Florida to New York to California at L.A. Airport, where helicopters have been delivered, specifically stencil United Nations, all white, and as national police force vehicles. These aircraft are still being used uh, across California and are also showing up in Michigan, Washington State, Minnesota, etc. Well, let me throw a little point out here for you. In this image, again, a picture says a thousand words. Uh, United States Army warning, entering Fort Polk military reservation entrance only, uh, let's see, uh, entrance only is approved by the post commander. Entry on this post constitutes consent to search person and vehicle at any time. Criminal and traffic offenses are strictly enforced. Violators are subject to the UCMJ and or the United States codes. You might notice what's behind this sign. Well, yes, those are U.S. or, well, international Humvees now, all marked United Nations, etc., and this is one of Fort Polk's many motor pools. These particular pieces, of course, 
are uh, readily, uh, well, well, shall we say, available to different training authorities across uh, Fort Polk and throughout the United States. Do we have examples of these and many others being moved? Oh, make no mistake about it, ladies and gentlemen. There are many images and there are many photographs available of images of things to come. Well, speaking of image of things to come, not only were these you know, UN pieces of equipment being transported, but we're going to tie in another part of American peril and, of course, call to arms. This is a very interesting subject, portable prisons. Showing up all over the United States, these particular vehicles are being transported, of course, through Louisiana, headed for Texas, and, of course, uh, other FEMA installations and facilities around the nation. Examples of uh, the equipment and how it's being used, yes, we were paying attention. And we did, of course, uh, make a point of identifying tags, company names, and getting all of the numbers we could off these vehicles. And tracking down who's who in the zoo and who has been, uh, shall we say, participating in these actions. Now, it should be noted that United Nations activities are not new in the United States. They were demonstrated even a few years ago. And there was a great contest, of course, a demonstration that, uh, well, the people who are talking about this must be crazy. We just don't know what's happening. In the first phase of denial, this helped to buy the other side some time. But we also did, as we said before, change their overall agenda and their timetable. We forced their hand in many areas. Had uh, the Weaver situation and the Waco situation developed appropriately, we would have seen yet a larger program laid into place sometime in late 1994 or the middle of 94 through 95 in which much of the equipment you see here uh, where it would have been fielded against the American people. Now again, we have changed the timeline. When I say we, I'm not talking about one individual. The overall maxi program involved with the Patriot Movement has been effective. But remember this, the New World Order also has a timeline agenda that must be met in order for its acolytes or all of its uh, individuals that are following these uh, particular ideologies, these particular theories, these particular uh, religions that have been established, if you want to call them that, the New World Order clique, they must demonstrate that they have total control, that it is futile to resist, you will be absorbed. And so we are seeing the waters being tested to demonstrate again just how ignorant or foolish we are. Uh, it was counted on that the American people only have about a three-month memory span. That's why I wanted to jog your memory at the very beginning uh, to demonstrate that New World Order is not a term that was made up by the Patriot Movement or the militia. The New World Order is the enemy that we all face. Now, some parties have admitted to cooperation with this action more so than others. But where will this lead? If at this point in time, foreign forces can be brought in under arms and allowed to operate inside the United States, and if the United Nations is becoming the global police officer, well, what's good for the goose is good for the goosey. And it's only a matter of time since we're part of that signatory contract that you and I are going to see these United Nations policemen on our block, since we're all part of that global neighborhood. Well, what can we anticipate? Well, first of all, they're going to need crises. And as we said, the media is, well, very adept at helping to create soap operas, to say the least. Uh, I should know personally, since we watched uh, during the Oklahoma Fair, a veritable storybook open up, fabricated from top to bottom, in many cases virtually outrageous. But some of what you didn't see, we have seen, and we have over 90 hours of satellite intercepted footage, ladies and gentlemen, that could never have been put on television. What happened is, and as you're going to see take place and develop in the future, the New World Order's mask will progressively disappear. It's going to be pulled off and it's going to be forced simply because we are keeping our heads. We're not reactionary, we're responding. We're not simply working ad hoc. We, of course, also have plans. We have an understanding of where we want to be and we're not again whining about the problem. We are coming up with solutions to the problem. When the Oklahoma affair took place, ladies and gentlemen, what you did not see on, in, the, in the footage that was kept on the satellites and not put across the airwaves on your television show an enemy that brushed all of the minor players aside that were the outer party people in the media. And what came out from behind the curtain, like the Wizard of Oz, wasn't a channel kind old man. It were they were individuals who were salivating, who were virtually tensed and angry. They were biting, chomping at the bit, slavering at the camera, they had to be taken off the air. There was no way that this footage could be used. It was virtually embarrassing. But what it did is it showed many people 
even in the media industry, just exactly what kind of creatures they were dealing with and what type of benevolence is really involved. The footage that you just saw here shows the New World Order in its prime. The knock at the door at three in the morning as Solzhenitsyn described. The wretched machine going from door to door searching for your weapons, trying to find informants, paying off your brothers, your sisters, your neighbors, whoever they could find, to find some crime to lay against your name. That is the future of the New World Order as we know it, and it can be demonstrated today across the globe. What is fascinating to me is unfortunately for all of our boasting and touting about having access to so much information, we are very, very limited in an actual scope or vision of what's really going on across the globe. Europeans complain about that constantly, but then again they also complain about our paranoid form of government. Well, I'll keep our paranoid form of government any day if that's what you wish to call it, knowing full well that we haven't quite had an Adolf Hitler or a Stalin yet, but don't worry. The other side's trying desperately to generate that situation. It's our job, not by reacting, but by responding to make sure that first of all we identify the threats, that we follow up with information, that we educate, and that we go right to the heart of the issue. Now, the camel's nose is usually the analogy that's used, and it is very appropriate. We are now looking at legislation that matches the activities and the training exercises that we have on film. Propo propositions such as H.R. 666, what an appropriate number, call for changing and altering the search and seizure laws of America. People three years ago who saw American Peril said, oh, I'll never see that in my lifetime, are now holding their breath and will not look you in the eye because, well, they're still alive and kicking, and now the rest of the agenda is being demonstrated. Now, is this something new? Did it just come off from under the rock, and did, did all of a sudden the other side just discover these ideas? No, these are part of a long-term plan, and no matter how you try to argue it, Contrary to popular belief, even though the American people are conditioned to think only three months back and not to look forward if at all possible, the opposition has trained their minions, their cadre, to do just the reverse. They look generationally towards an objective. We must relearn that policy. We must understand that we are not just fighting for today, for an individual single goal and profit, but we are looking for true freedom in America. We are looking for freedom not only for the United States, but we are a beacon of liberty. We're a torch, a light for the rest of the globe. To our north in Canada right now, ladies and gentlemen, something that, again, most people said was not possible, the Canadian government has passed sweeping gun bans, threatening house-to-house -house search and seizure, just as you saw on this tape a moment ago, in which the weapons will be taken from the Canadian people. The mistake that was made by Canada over 200 years ago is that when the American patriots showed up to try and help liberate them and to get them involved in this revolution against the king, instead of joining the ranks and liberating themselves, they fled into the fortresses of the king and were ever of, forever, of course, uh, attached by chain and ball to the monarchy and the New World Order crowd. Now, of course, as they can see, while they've been, shall we say, paid a little bit with bribes and stipends in different ways to mimic what they could see to the South in America. The mask in Canada is disappearing. It is coming off. And the true nature of the New World Order and what it's all about is being demonstrated. But is this the only part of the world where we're seeing this? No. And as you can see, this is a multinational effort. In Australia, New Zealand, and in England, many people who have seen American Peril and a call to arms have written us letters and stated that they cried. Why? Because while certainly they know that their nation is in bad shape, they understand fully that they at least had some place they perhaps could run to, known as the United States. The situation is now changed, and of course they can see that we're all in the same sandbox together, and unfortunately the kitty litter, as the New World Order looks at our Constitution, has been well used. In fact, they feel that it's either good for a fire starter or a toilet paper, nothing more. On the other hand, of course, there are many people out there who are desperately begging and pleading that you and I do what needs to be done, stand up. Stand as Americans, stand as free sovereigns, not as citizens, but as sovereigns. Free men and women, independent and capable of making decisions. That's why that man you saw is beating on the door, and he's not asking for permission to come in. He's simply going through the motions so that the men with the AK-47s, the AK-74s, the SIG assault rifles, the G3s, the FNFALs, so that they can come in right behind him. And again, we have virtually hours of the footage of these particular training exercises, and they are not pretty at all, ladies and gentlemen. For yes, don't worry, there is equity in the New World Order. Tyranny is very, very equitable. 
there is no difference between a concentration camp, well, and the New World Order's labor camps. There's no difference between they, they will treat men, women, or children. This has been demonstrated well at places like Ruby Ridge, Waco, Texas, yes, even Oklahoma, and of course, all of the new Wacos and all of the new Ruby Ridges that are around the corner. And why do I say that things aren't going to be different? Well, ladies and gentlemen, I've got files going all the way back to the 70s, the 60s, the 50s, the 40s. But especially with the ATF in the 70s, 80s, and 90s, there's been one consistency. They've been caught dirty. They have been, uh, shall we say, acquired at different times and slapped on the hands, only to be sent back out to do their dirty deeds again once people's memories have become fuzzy. Is it anything new that the New World Order should be involved in this way? This is part of their long-term agenda, to get the job done. And we've got to remember that the New World Order is on, the, is on the march. Actually, it's, as we say, on the run. They're in a hurry to get the job done that they've started. From hurt with, re, with regard to the FBI, and I think you've just seen a few images of, well, their special actions, black clad, no insignia, and of course, their basic policy of dynamic entry kicking in the doors and making sure that, well, everybody pays the price. What kind of price will be paid? Well, if you take a look at even their own publications, they have a new thing called total kill option. Total kill option means you shoot everybody. Have we heard this before? Do we have this on tape? Well, the British practice this. The Russians do in Chechnya against the Chechens right now. So, no, this isn't anything new, and we're not teaching the Russians or the uh, Chinese anything, they're coming and teaching our people a new bag of tricks. Not all that new, but certainly here in America, something that most of you have never seen before. Well, not yet. I ask you, ladies and gentlemen, to look into your hearts and ask the question, and look into the minds, look into the, the minds of the Founding Fathers and ask them if the actions that you've seen in the last three years, years are anything, anything at all like what they envisioned for America. I don't think so. The challenge now, of course, is for us, again, not to complain, complain and whine about the problem, but to come up with solutions. And I definitely think we can demonstrate that from A to Z. Families are the foundation of American life. If we have stronger families, we will have a stronger America. Before I go on, I'd like to take just a moment to thank my own family and to thank the person who has taught me more than anyone else over 25 years about the importance of families and children. Of course, family values. Yes, the Clintonistas are notorious for that, aren't they? Well, sorry, we just couldn't help ourselves. The New World Order being what it is with its controlled media, well, I'm sure we're much more palatable. And, uh, well, things being what they are and trying to be a little equal with regard to broadcasting time, we're not going to apologize for what we just did. Make no mistake about it. But, ladies and gentlemen, understand the press and what you uh, have been seeing, of course, in the last many months since Oklahoma is very fascinating indeed. At this point in time, I would like to address that issue because uh, we challenge all of you. Many of you are going to be involved in, as we said, local government, politics. You'll be involved, of course, in the up upcoming elections, provided we have them. And, of course, uh, not only that, but uh, many other activities with regard to the militia. Listen to my words and listen carefully. Don't let them in. And if you are going to let the press in, well, I suggest a couple of basic procedures we work with. Number one, any activity that's going to be involving outside uh, information sources should always be videotaped in its entirety by you. Now, the reason I'm going to bring this point up, it's very important so that you can demonstrate what they edited and butchered and what it is that actually happened. And this is an excellent opportunity for you to demonstrate the actions of the New World Order in motion. During the Oklahoma City uh, bombing uh, fiasco and just afterwards, ladies and gentlemen, there were things the likes of which you didn't see nationally because they were regionally controlled pieces, but were, they were very fascinating indeed. And uh, again, to help curb this, well, always videotape the camera crew videotaping the interview. In this way, uh, you'll find out just exactly who's who in the Zoom, what's going on. Let me give you the best example. Many people complimented us on our Sam Donaldson interview, which took place only a short time after the Oklahoma bombing. 
Everybody assumed it was live. It was not. And in fact, over 50 minutes worth of footage was actually taken, and when they were done, what you saw was the best they could butcher out of all of the taping that took place. Now, I'd like to make this point. Many things are tied into the whole agenda for the New World Order in America, and one of them has to do with the Conference of the States. Now, we beat it. You can pat yourselves on the back there, but it's going to come back and haunt us again. They're going to try a second, a third, a fourth, and even a fifth time if necessary through this particular avenue. What happened is that the Conference of the State, an attempt, uh, to, an attempt to try and overthrow the Constitution before the Oklahoma bombing, went to all 50 states of the Union just about simultaneously within less than a two-week period. It was a steamroller and moving very, very quickly. Most people had no idea that it even existed. Amazingly enough, we were able to catch them uh, in motion and utilizing both our shortwave assets, the fax networks, and conventional telephone communications, patriots linked all over the nation and stopped the Conference of the States butt cold in its tracks. Ah. During the Sam Donaldson interview that you saw, though, knowing full well that there was no coverage of this event two months before Oklahoma, I mentioned it no less than nine times during the interview. If you have that interview on tape or if you'd like to see a copy of it, we can access it for you. And you will note that in no way, shape, or form was Conference of the States allowed to be mentioned anywhere. However, in the same breath, through our intelligence report program and other work that was being done, we mentioned Conference of the States on live programming everywhere across the nation. What was the end result? Well, sometime in June, four to five months after the defeat of the Conference of the States, both the Wall Street Journal and the New York Times were forced to actually write about the issue. Why did it take four to six months? Well, because between the internet, videotapes, and live interviews and live actions taking place with other programs, they could no longer hide the facts, and we were able to demonstrate this as an example of their actions in motion. Were we satisfied with the results? Well, we, things did go well for us, but again, not because we were, we were reactionary, but because we responded to the situation and we were fluid with regard to how we operated during that period. I will state this, that had the New World Order had its way, we would not be sitting here today talking to you. Not only that, but this nation would have been an entirely alien creature to what you perceive America to be. In fact, it would have been America with a K. The Night of the Long Knives or, knives or Reichstag Fire, as it was uh, going to be developed into, did not develop because many people thrust, saw through the facade. Well, that's where we're challenging you now. There is much work to be done, and it is obvious that the press will be at the forefront of the next propaganda wave, which is coming up very soon, by the way. We are seeing the first inklings of this across the nation, and I might note uh, that uh, you will see a series of pieces done both in the public press and through private mediaries in different agencies and organizations to create another groundswell. You may have noticed a couple of actions in the last couple of weeks or months in your local papers that seemed as if they were trying to stir something up. One of the reasons that they failed is because we held many of the press to the press their feet to the fire and they were not able to effectively use the same uh, momentum and avalanche effect to get people to report on people reporting on people reporting on people that they did in the, fa in the past. Now, can we expect uh, more examples of Bill Clinton's and uh, Janet Reno's family values in motion? Most assuredly. And as we've demonstrated with the portable detention camps, oh, uh, by the way, did we mention detention camps? Well, we probably should follow up on that. Uh, the detention camps that were discussed in American Peril and also in a call to arms are now being publicly discussed in your regional press, as most of you know that are listening right now. FEMA performed a series of special exercises along the Mexican border, admitting that sometime in the not-too-distant future, we are going to see a crisis evolve in the Mexican uh, uh, nation that will force part of their population north. And lo and behold, they declared particular areas to be FEMA detention control facilities. This is not an accident, and in fact, again, they did not want the information released until it was usable and the population had been properly engineered. Now, thesis, antithesis, synthesis, the Hegelian principle of create a problem, demonstrate a problem, and then come up with a solution that people otherwise would not accept is exactly what we are seeing in America today. I might also remind you, though, that again, because we were not reactionary but responsive, we also have many, many guidelines that have helped to put a damper on this particular formula. And we've actually uh, thrown askew much of what was attempted in the last six to eight months. 
Consider this, first of all. Through direct communications, not relying upon second or third parties to get the job done, ladies and gentlemen, our numbers have quintupled, sectupled, and in some cases are virtually immeasurable. One of the other reasons, and I will use an analogy that a friend of ours used that was quite appropriate, that the logic of the New World Order was to, of course, chase down that little fiddler crab that they were talking about called the, the New World, or called the uh, militia, and of course, scurrying across the beach with their stick in hand, they chased them into a hole, and of course, immediately stuck the stick into the ground trying to get rid of the little fiddler crab or force him out. Unfortunately, about the time of Oklahoma when they fabricated this situation and they stuck the stick in, the whole beach moved. And that is a, a cold fact that has to be accepted by the other side and a warming fact for us because, again, as I said, we're still here for a reason. The whole beach moved. Many, many people are out there who are quiet patriots, are still doing much of the work that needs to be done, but they're doing it the way we asked. If you find a measure, a place where you feel comfortable, and go to that point and then excel beyond it. Find a limit and then exceed it. Go beyond that point. Sit down tonight with, you, with your families, your fellow patriots, with your friends. Come up with a plan. Stick to it. Accomplish it. Make it a goal. I don't care if it's, uh, ho if it's uh, homeschooling, if you're talking about getting involved in township government, land patents, common law, the militia itself, which, by the way, I will remind you, all of you are part of. At this point in time, we need to create a multiple number of fronts that our enemy simply cannot deal with, and we can already see elements of their system burgeoned and overloading. In fact, what this will force our aggressor to do is violate his own guidelines and rules that he has doctored at this point. We discussed the War Powers Act. We've discussed all of these other options and all of the legislation that has been put into place. There are men and women who have made this their life's research. They have done tremendous work and should be, a com should be commended for it. But remember, too, that the battlefield is changing. We have to still continually and in an ongoing process educate as many as we can. We're trying not to leave anyone behind. Now, that doesn't mean there aren't going to be people that are virtually ignorant right up until the point where the... Uh, uh, storm is upon us. But I might remind you that, as brought forward earlier, uh, we have to be as adept, of course, as Christians are with the Bible, as Americans uh, with the Constitution as our guideline, as our tool. We have to have that tool in hand. We have to be able to know how to use it properly, and we have to understand that it was written not in a time that was, was ignorant of the possibility of the future, just the reverse. The Founding Fathers were an inspiration, and in fact, for even for myself, and I'm probably the best example of, I think, many of you that are sitting there, many years ago, I did not have the foggiest idea of much of what was the actual history of our nation. Uh, I could tell you more about what was going on in Europe, and uh, basically, I could uh, extrapolate, interpret, and of course, uh, even pronounce much of many of the names, uh, the histories, and the backgrounds of nations overseas better than I could our own states. And I would say that even today, that's still the case to a certain extent because there is so much more that intentionally the New World Order crowd failed to teach us about our own country. It's what's missing right now in America that we're going to have to bring back. Or I should say more, more appropriately, we must step into the future to find. For there was a little example of something that I demonstrated here in American Peril, the wheel of, um, of history as it spins. And we are moving forward. Unfortunately, we're moving through the cycle to uh, what is a very dangerous phase. For us, what we need to do is get the treadmill to work a little faster, and we need to achieve our freedom, break, break the chains of, of, of slavery and bondage, and move on into the future to what is obviously a not a foregone conclusion, but an, an absolute necess necessity in order for the rest of the world to be as free as we are. We cannot do it through oppression and tyranny or through the United Nations or through the Clintonistas or the George Bushes doing it covertly. We need to do it at our level, at the personal level, at the individual level. That's the only way that we are going to succeed. Now, it is, it's fascinating to me that uh, most people, of course, utilizing this concept that, uh, well, we only have a three-month memory span, seem to forget that were it not for the Patriot Movement, there would have been no Waco hearings. Were it not for the Patriot Movement dragging it up in the face of the American people and showing people and demonstrating to them the facts, there would have been no Ruby Ridge hearings. And the only reason that you finally saw them on Communist News Network and on C-SPAN is because of myself, many men and women that are out there working now, and you who put the pressure on these people and the issue was forced. 
But I might remind you of something. That was a point of history, two, three, and four years old. In that time, our enemy, forcing us to, in some ways, have to concentrate on these events of the past, has continued to move into the future themselves. So while certainly these are important issues, we must keep an eye on the footsteps of our enemy as we pace them in this race towards the finish line. And another thing I think all of you can admit, while many will admit that definitely there's something wrong with America and what's going on, that there's something in the wings, many others who are well-educated will tell you right offhand that, ladies and gentlemen, we are close to what the other side would consider an end-game scenario. Now, a fascinating part about the whole program as we're seeing it today, especially at this point in time in the uh, late winter and early spring of 1996, is the contradictions even seen in the American press right now. Why is this? Well, what's happening, as, as we've described, is there is a culling of the New World Order crowd. Many of the players are now feeling a little fidgety and a little antsy because they realize maybe they're not keepers. Maybe they're the tossers, the ones that are going to be gotten rid of. And there is, of course, the cannon fodder. Consider the Waco attack. As originally described, and even in later pieces done, uh, such as ABC, NBC, and CBS, the uh, comments by the uh, ATF agents and the FBI, and make no mistake about it, both were there at the beginning of that attack. One didn't take over for the other. They were working hand in hand through the entire action. These characters, ladies and gentlemen, complained that they were an army of conquest retreating in defeat. Their words, not ours. So what we have to ask, and this is very important to consider, is army, hmm, in the field. I seem to recall they were supposed to be a policing agency. Hmm. Also, the fact that they retreated in defeat, well, that implies that, uh, yes, conquest was their mission. They had an objective far alien to anything that was the original intent of the framers of the Constitution, the Bill of Rights. Is this the type of government that our founders wanted? I challenge yet again. And let me ask you something. In, at the end of the American Revolution, uh, the founders had a chance to do just about anything they wanted, and just about anybody would have gone along with whatever they engineered. And yet, there was no, and there still is no allowance in the Constitution for a national police force. Now, as witnessed by the evidence that you've seen here so far, and there are many, many other pieces, we have virtually volumes of data to draw from, we can demonstrate that that is the full intent and purpose of this regime, and that these people shun the Constitution. In fact, many more comments, most of them within the last two to three weeks, have specifically been made by uh, Bill Clinton, and also by other members of the administration, shunning the idea that the Constitution has any validity. In our courts right now, with many of you who are fighting in the courts, comments are being made that, yes, while the Constitution exists, it does not pertain. It is not relevant. Well, I challenge you to something. When is it relevant? Where does it stand valid if it doesn't stand here in this nation now? And one of our concerns, as we can see, is that with all of the, the, the other manipulative toys that are available to the New World Order, they ha obviously are either going to have to do it or walk away. Let me ask you a very pointed question. Do you honestly think that the Rockefellers, the Rothschilds, the CFR, the Trilateral Commission, and all of these other characters that have been involved in this, whose names have changed from time to time, and by the way, will change again, that these people are going to walk away from the sandbox considering how many toys they've already invested, how many they've broken in the process to get this far? If you truly believe that, then you might as well shut this thing off and walk away right now. Because the bottom line is, is that we have an integrated process here. We cannot be handicapped or crippled. Just as I would say directly to a militia man who might be listening that you must understand the Constitution and the Bill of Rights. You must read them. Because after all, what are you fighting for? But I will also say in reverse order, for those who simply think that pushing paper will stop a, stop a tank, or that pushing paper will prevent the black shirts that you saw earlier from coming through the front door, I will shake you awake right now and tell you that that is not the case. I challenge you to read Alexander Solzhenitsyn's The Gulag Archipelago. The man lived the experience, but not for a few years, not as an inconvenience because of a little state of martial law for, oh, a few weeks, not because there was a snowstorm, for instance, on the East Coast and they had to ration milk for days on end where supposedly there are no food sh shortages in America. Oh, no, no, no. He lived the New World Order for real for well over four to five decades. That's right, decades. It is realistic to understand and to fully re realize at this time 
that if the New World Order has, it way, has its way, there will be no place to run. And if there is a place to hide, I want you to show me. I've challenged Americans all over the country to, to demonstrate this to me. Show me a mountain where you're going to hide. Show me a valley where you can conceal yourself. If we as Christians, if we as Americans, as we, if we as sovereigns do not stand up, who do you expect to stand up? Who, is go who are you going to buy? In fact, even Rome found this out the hard way with the Praetorians and the Praetorian Guard itself and also with the Imperium as it developed. Mercenaries hired do not value your freedom and certainly are not going to if you will not stand up and value it yourself. In fact, anything that you're stupid enough to give away, somebody usually is smart enough to take when it's given for free. Well, that's the situation we're dealing with right now. There are many who are going to challenge and then, of course, as we say, look at the facts, look at the information, and, and sit in a state of denial right up to the point where this is overwhelming them, where it virtually overruns them, like a tidal wave, or we're still, just like the black wave of the Mongol hordes of the Middle Ages, well, congratulations, at some point, if you, if you don't turn and fight together, you will be found individually and overrun. It's going to happen. Now, the sad part is, we've had the opportunity over the last several decades to actually listen to people who now we find out knew exactly what they were talking about. I'm not the first person to do this, and I pray to God that I'm not the last. I'm just one of a successive chain of individuals who at different times are going to have to stand up against the New World Order and against this tyranny. If anybody were to ask me right now what they actually thought or what, what my goal was, what, is, what, is my, what would be the shining star or the, the, the solution that I could see for the world right now? I mean, after all, if we're complaining about what their idea is and, and how they're coming up with this solution called the New World Order, what do we have to offer? Well, we have one of the finest documents and one of the best written pieces of legislation and, and, and handed down to us, inspired by God, to give given, given any nation ever on this planet. Consider this. Everybody, everybody on this planet is trying to get here. You have to ask yourself, why? Is it for the rivers, the streams? Well, certainly some of the physical wealth that is enjoyed, but that physical wealth is a representation of the pleasures of liberty and freedom that we have enjoyed, precious gifts given to us by our, by our Maker, and that we were allowed to enjoy provided we remained clean, provided we made sure that we were honorable, provided make sure that we properly gave respect to the person who gave us those liberties. We are failing, and obviously we are sinking right now. We are having problems the likes of which shouldn't actually take place, considering the, the wealth that, in theory, we possess right now. Well, consider this. My goal or my dream would be never to have to fire a shot and to take the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, and the documents that we have and peacefully demonstrate them to the rest of the world. We don't need a new world order to do that, and we certainly don't need the United Nations. In fact, the very nature of the United Nations and the system that we're facing is such that they must take away those documents. But given the opportunity with peace, ladies and gentlemen, we do not need weapons of war to take this theory, this idea, the, these ideas to other people for showing them how they work here and then offering to take them to other people around the planet. That will not be allowed by the New World Order because how can you sell a pile of debris, a bill of goods like socialism, fascism, communism, when you, if you have this system intact running the way it's supposed to? The bottom line is, as we've already seen in the last 20 to 30 years, you can't. So what's happened is planned subversion has taken place. We have to re-educate. I pity the generation coming up right now in, in one way. They have been so ineptly educated by the, edu by the generation coming out of the 60s and 70s that while it is not their fault, it will take them the rest of their lives just as it's taking the rest of our lives to recover what they've lost. Maybe longer because some of what they have lost they may never properly learn. Consider that. Consider the damage done to this nation. And it will take just as long as it took to do the damage to repair it. Well, that's the challenge to all of you whenever I, whenever I look, look to, to the many hundreds of thousands and millions of people we've spoken to. I look out at the different people, and I see it a different way than most of you. When I look at you, it's me as an audience looking at the myriad of expressions, the myriad of questions, and the, the many fascinating, diverse people that we have in this country. That's what we want to cherish, preserve, and maintain. And if the New World Order takes over, all of that will be gone. The blue shirts, the black shirts, 
the helmets, the black helicopters, which people have tried to scoff and yet most have seen, or at least in one form or another have identified, people in the military who have come forward who will honestly and openly admit that most, if not all, of what we've talked about, they have seen and they are experiencing and living every day. Cries are being heard across the nation by many patriots, but still need to be heard by many people. Let me give you the best example. We have a young man right now, Michael New, who virtually has become the cutting edge of the spear point. In any situation where you have a war, be it a political war first, then working into a physical confrontation, ladies and gentlemen, there are people that are always on the edge. Well, Michael New decided to stand up. Is he a captain? Is he a general? Is he a man with 40, 50, or 60 years experience? Is this a man with gray temples who knows better? No, this is a young man, a specialist for, in his 20s, who decided that because mom and dad taught him well, he knows when something's wrong. This young man stood up, he said no, and he's going to be punished for it in theory by the very system that he would actually hope to preserve. Why? Because it has been subverted and it has been damaged by individuals who have put no value on our Constitution and Bill of Rights whatsoever. Here is a chance for all of us to stand together as patriots, to stand together as Americans. I don't care if you're in the inner city, I don't care if you're in the country, from the mountains to the swamps, it makes no difference. Not one of us will have our little corners to play in if we allow our enemy to take this nation. And if you don't think so, just take a look at what they've already gotten away with. Consider this, there is not a single man who has been properly punished for the murder of a woman holding a baby and a young boy on a mountain in Idaho. There has not been one single person properly brought for trial for criminal action in the attack on Waco. They have been exonerated. Ladies and gentlemen, it is only a matter of time before the people that you saw knocking on doors, before the people you see driving these funny white tanks with the strange letters on the side, decide that they have to enforce the New World Order's laws in Louisiana or in Missouri or in Florida or in Kentucky or wherever. But it will be here. Now, denial only lasts so long. Then anger sets in. We don't want you to be angry per se, though certainly I am angered in some cases by seeing, first of all, the ignorance of the American people that would let some of these things happen. Second, that people, especially men who claim to be so intestinally uh, fortified and that they will stand against anything, especially the Rose Bowl, the Super Bowl, or especially for the next beer over there in the refrigerator in the kitchen, but won't stand to help support and protect women, children, or even men in their own households in a, what is supposed to be a free, st free state as sovereigns in America. Now I challenge you, and I challenge you directly, that if you think that there is a, it is a problem with this country, that you need to seek out knowledge, you need to seek out information. There's a plethora of databases to choose from. But I also challenge you to this, that if you're going to seek it out, that you also collect the information yourself. Why? Well, we need 100 million libraries in America so that George Orwell's prediction about the black memory hole of history does not take place. By the way, if you think Orwell did not understand the concept of computers, now let me ask you something. When they put all of the databases into the computer net, doesn't the delete key work all the time? Isn't it an option to, at their discretion, virtually make uh, the page of one book incinerate and turn into atoms that will float in the stratosphere never to be returned again, as, as he said, vaporized, never a memory in any living person's mind? Don't think that it can't happen. It sits in almost every desk in every nation in this country right now, one way or another. The computer is what Orwell was talking about. It is one of the finest tools that George Orwell and Big Brother could demonstrate. The problem is that how could, you, how could you demonstrate all of the concepts to a population that, first of all, could barely accept the idea that Big Brother could exist, let alone some of the technology that was already predicted by the New World Order crowd 30, 40, and 50 years ago. That's the challenge, ladies and gentlemen. Now, what are we looking to? We're looking to the future. We're not complaining about what's going on uh, without saying that we have solutions. And this is part of it. The first step is education. Another challenge, Michael New is standing up right now as a patriot. He's in uniform. How do you think he found out about it? How do you think his parents found out? How do you think I found out about this, what was going on? A few men and women years ago decided to make the effort to talk to me in one way or another. At one point or another, they tweaked the right mental nerve, they tweaked the right tendon, and forced me to take steps and to, and to ask questions otherwise I wouldn't have. Well, now the challenge is with you. 
you get an opportunity to do the same thing. That's part of this long gray line of Americans that stretches all the way back to the revolution. They made a great effort. It's time for you to make the great effort also. And gentlemen, as you know, there is a veritable battery of resources available to the patriots in terms of educational tools. But one of the first things we have to challenge everybody to is a strong foundation. I guess the best example is to start with uh, those tools which we know are effective. Number one, the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, which we have sitting here in the Citizens' Rule Book. Just as good Christians must know the Bible, so good Americans must know the Constitution. And it's crucial that we have these tools primed and ready to be used as effective weapons against the New World Order. We can demonstrate its actions. We can also demonstrate, demonstrate the outcome if we fail to follow the guidelines that have already been laid down uh, centuries ago. Uh, the advantage that we have as Americans, though, of course, is that there are many, many other tools that can be brought out of our inventory, uh, everything from videotapes to audio tapes and books. Now, uh, most people have asked us, well, what can we read? What can we find that will, will, that will be effective? And I might point out that, of course, we do have a variety of texts that are available. Now, these are provided by many different sources throughout the Patriot Movement, so there's more than just one single system that you could choose. Uh, for instance, Renegade, Renegade Government USA, Mass Lawlessness in Action. Uh, an excellent reader on, to help you to understand the nuances of New World Order conversion of the Constitution and Bill of Rights and our Republican form of government to democracy. Well, you're hearing democracy quite a bit, but you don't hear the word republic used or even used even by the Republicans. Remember those people? That other party that's supposed to be having a revolution right now? Well, take advantage of the many texts that are out there. We ask not that you uh, borrow it and send it back, but better still, create libraries of your own. A foundation reader, probably one of the best that you could choose for somebody who especially uh, has a little college education, The Creature from Jekyll Island by G. Edward Griffin, a second look at the Federal Reserve. Now this particular text is outstanding in that for most people, the first thing they ask is, well, how will this affect me? And the best thing that you can do is turn to them, have them reach into their wallet and pull out one of those Federal Reserve notes, and then explain to them that every day in America, for every American sovereign, we are always affected by the New World Order and have been for quite some time. Now the important thing there is with regard to the New World Order crowd, are they effective? Have they done damage to this country? Well, through the money most certainly. We discussed earlier a thing called uh, a fraud, or actually one of the great frauds uh, in our, uh, our recent history within this century. And of course it has to do with the Federal Reserve itself and uh, starts at the time when the Federal Reserve was brought into power. Remember that the Federal Reserve was generated oh, during Christmas vacation, uh, similar to legislation that just passed right here in the state of Michigan where I live. Uh, they waited till everybody went home for the holidays, and when they came back, cha-ching, what a Christmas present they had. Well, in addition to that, we also have to have a good foundational understanding of the Constitution itself. One of the other texts here by Dr. Eugene Schroeder is an excellent example. Constitution, fact or fiction, the story of the nation's... Uh, Descent from a constitutional republic through a constitutional dictatorship to, of course, an unconstitutional dictatorship. Whoops. Now, uh, this particular book is excellent as a primer for many people to, as we say, get them started. Because, again, once you can follow, like a detective, the many steps that were involved to get us to where we are today, then you have a better overall understanding of where we're going. Now, I was taught many years ago as an intelligence analyst that uh, if you can demonstrate with sound, reliable intelligence a particular window or period of action, then you can follow through to the present day with reasonable assumption and accurate predictions of actions that will take place today and into the future through natural progression and order. Well, that's one of the reasons that we promote the idea of collecting and creating and generating a library. Remember, these books are priceless. Uh, you're not going to find them in many libraries because they're being purged. We have lists of virtually hundreds of books, hundreds and thousands of books that have been taken off the shelf by the New World Order crowd. Why? Well, not, not just politically correct is the problem, just simply correct in general. They have a good understanding and a good foundational work that was done as biography or autobiography from the people who lived the particular experience the other side is trying to rewrite. Interestingly enough, at this point in time, uh, throughout the libraries of America, they are concentrating, and I say they, we mean the New World Order crowd, 
are concentrating in the libraries on the turn of the century, about 1880 through to about 1915, 1916, which then makes me scratch my head and wonder, well, what would they be taking off the shelves? Well, you might recall that that particular period of history is much like the one we're living right now about a hundred years later, having to do with our interaction in foreign affairs, uh, getting involved more in activities in Europe again, uh, specifically at the end of this period, 1914, we begin to see the first inklings of our first international war, joining with uh, other nations in a war against the Hun. Oh, that's right, World War I, the war to end all wars. Well, that's why you need these texts to bring up a good historical parameter, a background of where we've, where we've come from so you'll know where we're going. Other examples, excellent examples of the other government that most people question, is The New World Order and The Unseen Hand by Ralph Epperson. Both texts are excellent examples of what's wrong with government and the people behind these scenes, behind the actions you've seen on national television, behind many of the works that you've read yourself personally, and in fact, many of the fiction pieces that have been done across the country. It's important that if you're going to do this research, again, good foundational works make the difference. There are many texts, of course, and pamphlets that can also be used for educational purposes. Needless to say, the Citizen Rule Book has already been demonstrated. Oh, by the way, did I tell you that the government provides us with a tremendous amount of information that we can demonstrate to people exactly what's going on in government with? Well, that's why we'd recommend, for instance, Supreme Court rulings, Federal Register documents, and a veritable plethora of other publications generated uh, from Pueblo, Colorado, the GPO, Government Printing Office out of Washington, D.C., and there are many other sources. Another example, though, are many works that are being reprinted about original documents and information that was generated by the Founding Fathers. A piece that's on the top here, George Washington's Vision, America's Three Great Perils, is uh, an excellent example of texts that are now being regenerated by the Patriot Movement and sent out amongst the people for them to read. They are timely, they're important, and again, they're user-friendly. They can be done down at the individual, the personal level, generated in mass and distributed at your discretion. Now, one of the other things that bothers me the most about watching the Patriot Movement right now, ladies and gentlemen, is while we've made tremendous strides, there are many underlying currents that seem to be creating eddies and backwashes within the Patriot Movement itself. One of them is the fear that, well, somebody will find out what we're doing. Well, congratulations. Uh, that's a mystery to me, isn't it? The New World Order crowd, yes, has spies. Yes, they're trying to collect names. So what you're going to have to decide is what type of a, re of a free sovereign you are. In order for us to remain free, it is going to have to cost us something. There has never been a time in our past when liberty has been cheap. And in this case, if we are not willing to stand up, again, our enemy is more than willing to stand in our place. And you are going to get, well, what you deserve. Uh, with regard to uh, being involved, choose a level that you're willing to participate in, whatever activities, and become a master of that activity. Become, a, become an expert in that area. Become an educator. Become a person who will help to develop other minds. Now, bottom line to the, the basic story, though, is this. Do you think that uh, Patrick Henry would satisfy, uh, be satisfied with anything less than 100%? Do you think that John Adams, do you think that George Washington himself, a man who was well-to-do and really didn't have to stand up? Uh, well, yeah, he felt that he did. He understood his place in history, I think. So did all the other men who decided to put their name on the line and also their lives, their fortunes, their future, because they understood what they could achieve. The only thing, the only real weapon that our enemy has first is this oppressive thought that somehow they're not all seeing and all knowing. Well, yes, they do have good resources, but they are not all seeing and they are not all knowing. Fact of the matter is that even as we speak, the reason I brought up the media earlier is because they're trying to re-engineer. They're desperately trying to find a foothold, a pad that they can land on because of all the tools that we have at our disposal that have been working so well. The one true test of whether or not we've been successful is how they have to react to us. Notice I didn't say respond. The other side, the New World Order crowd, is now being forced to react. In other words, knee-jerk response. One of the challenges to that, which I originally had questioned from the very beginning with the Oklahoma bombing, knowing what we know now about the personalities, having identified many of the parties involved with the portfolios that we have been able to build up on many of these individuals, especially the federal personnel that were on site, we now know where they were prior to the bombing, what interactivities are involved with, what foreign government agencies are involved with. Yes, I said foreign. 
and that many of these characters, of course, did not feel they would have to worry about the Patriot Movement after April 19th of 1995. Well, it is almost a year later, and yes, we are still here. The reason? You. That's why, again, there is safety in numbers. It's the only strength this nation has ever had. And I guess I'd challenge you that, too, because what other strength was there? The only way, reason this nation came about is because all of the people finally perceived and understood the common threat to, the, to their well-being. And that, no, it made no difference if they were of, of exact like mind. In fact, I, I guess I'll remind you when this document was written, uh, when the Constitution Bill of Rights were put together, that they virtually had fist fights that these people put in the same room had to be put in under lock and key so they wouldn't escape. Yes, that's right. Remember that there was great conflict afoot, that there were definitely at least two, possibly three or five different schools, depending upon the instructor that you have with regard to history. So there's nothing new in the Patriot Movement right now. What we have to understand is our common goal. And that's why I say anybody who has the time to backbite or to turn and fight or waste air or uh, space or written material on subjects that are not relative to attacking the New World Order, to going after the aggressor, are wasting resources that we certainly don't have, uh, or, or, nor are we willing to waste. We are concentrating our fires, as we say, on the aggressor because that is the threat. The common bond is, is crucial to all of us. And again, I would also question and, and remind you that is it not our enemy that has usually come with silken tongue behind us to try and create barbs amongst us? That's what we are seeing today, and that's where we are not going to be drawn into that particular fight. These tools are crucial. Now, with regard to audio tapes and videotapes, there are such series as, and I highly recommend this one, America with a K. Uh, we have all, all forms of uh, radio production pieces being done by many different people and personalities. All of these should be reproduced in mass. Let me give you a challenge today also. There have been several so far over the last two hours. But one of them that I think is most important is you all have relatives who are in uniform. Every one of you listening at one point or another have a, a brother, a sister, an aunt, an uncle, grandfather, grandmother, uh, a cousin, or just a good family friend, somebody you've even grown up with that right now is in uniform overseas, man or, man or woman, or in law enforcement. We used to call them peace officers. Now we call it law enforcement. Well, these people need to be contacted. And if you're afraid, then it is in a sad state of affairs that in your own country, you should be afraid of people we used to call peace officers and all now call enforcement personnel. These are people who are your own relatives that you are scared to talk to. That should tell you something about how deeply rooted the New World Order is in many areas right now and just how well conditioned you've been by the boob tube. Well, here's a chance, if all else fails, take the tools that are at your disposal and anonymously give them to them. Oh, that's right. They don't need to know where they came from. and They can be left there and left at the disposal of the person you're trying to contact in a whole myriad of ways. And you'll notice I'm not telling you how to do it because I know all of you out there have the collective creative minds to come up with ways all on your own. But the important thing is that you are also obligated as sovereigns, as free men and women, to make that contact and to try and find a peaceable solution to this problem. Now, I will stand by my words as I have in the past that I believe it is inevitable we shall face a physical conflict, and there is a reason. It is not because of our failure that this will happen, but because of our successes. Imagine this, if I told you a year ago that a Specialist Four like Michael New would stand up and that we would see him face off against the New World Order and against the government of the United States in such a way, oh, I'll never see that in my lifetime. No, nobody would ever rally behind him either. Guess what? People have, and many that were not in the Patriot Movement initially. But what, what it took was the effort of only one person, one young man who finally had the courage and the intestinal fortitude to stand where it counted. And it doesn't have to be every one of us, but I will say this, it's a sad state of affairs that he should stand in front of us when he should be standing with us, together, side by side, shoulder to shoulder. That is the only protection we've ever had in the past. And as long as this republic stands, and as long as we're going to maintain our freedom, it is the only way that it will stay in the future. Now, the challenge is to all of us here. I can give you all of the recommendations, all the tools, all the toys, all the resources in the world. But it's kind of like the old horse with the water bucket. You can lead him there, but you can't make him drink. So as I say this, I will also remind you of something else. Don't be discouraged. Think about this. Do you think or can you imagine that I have affected uh, positively every person I've come in contact with? Imagine and think back to all of the ridicule that most of the people you know in the Patriot Movement have already experienced. 
There are men here with us today that have been in this movement for 40 and 50 years. And they can see and they will attest, they will actually work as witnesses for you even as I sit here today and tell you that they have never seen action the likes of which they are now seeing and they are personally experiencing. So do not be discouraged if you run up against somebody who appears to be wasting your time. Don't let them waste your time. Walk away. I know that's hard for some people. I've seen some people almost come to tears because of their concern. The patriots that I deal with that I have seen, and I have seen millions, are not wild-eyed and crazy people. They are compassionate, they are heartful people, and they are hurt when they can see that possibly their family or their relatives will be hurt by the impending actions that they can see on the horizon. Well, while you may be concerned, you may actually be distraught, the only thing that I can say is uh, each person has to choose their path also. And God's writings are still the best thing to turn to. One of the questions I had asked that I had responded to in a letter is to turn to the 91st Psalms. No matter how, the, how these other parties that are with us fall, no matter how many fall, victory is assured for us. The other side trembles at that thought. And that, my friends, that is why you're going to see conflict as our enemy with the wickedness that is within them. If you look for all the sweet words, as Orwell said, hate is love, war is peace. Well, that is exactly what we are experiencing right now, and the enemy is trembling at the thought that this sleeping giant known as America is rustling and moving. In fact, we've made our first great giant steps, pardon the pun. It is because of this success that chances are at the state level, the county level, or even at the township level, we're going to see physical contact take place. A sheriff or a mayor or a governor is going to decide that he's on the wrong side or is going to decide that he's going to exert his powers, his legal powers, and the New World Order, the Fed, and the United Nations are going to violate them. It is at that point of time that there will truly be a test of the patriot movement. Already we've had an exciting action which was successful, though of course we only skim by by the uh, skin of our teeth, as we would say, uh, in White Horse, Ohio, a mayor called upon the militia. The action that was originally uh, ordered by the uh, Fed and, sta and state agencies was canceled. Why? Because men and women decided to step forward and say, if need be, I will come. If need be, we will support you. Now, do I know the mayor of White House, Ohio? No, I do not. In fact, I may have only spoken to the woman in a general meeting briefly for only an hour or two. But it was that contact that made the difference and turned that one key person at the right place at the right time. And that's the same mission that all of you have. I guess the challenge is what we've said so many times in the past, as we are one just one gray line of Americans passing the flag on one to the other, it's now your turn. And the challenge is for you to carry the flag properly. Do you know even where it is? Can you find it in that dusty corner over in the uh, back of the gov government courthouse? The right flag, the unadorned flag, the one that represents our Constitution and Bill of Rights. Well, I know where it is, and I've seen it in the hearts of so many Americans that there's no doubt in my mind that we're going to win. Now, I want to try and do as little damage as possible to help it and bring as many people through this as we can properly. Does that mean that we are not going to see casualties? Ladies and gentlemen, be realistic. All you need to do is turn to the many books for instance, as we have in this room right here, look at the history of this nation and the history of man to understand the depredations of that which has always been around, the new world order and tyranny. With that in mind, we are going to be forced, and, and it won't be, well, I shouldn't say forced per se, but we are going to have to. It isn't that hard because I am willing to stand up. I don't have to be coerced to do this. I'm more than willing to stand up against tyranny. There are many millions of others like me who are just as, just as capable. And again, we're not wild-eyed, we're not crazy. But we have a good, firm grasp of history, and we have a good understanding, having looked at all the tapes and all the information and all of the plethora of data that we can access from around the world on exactly what the New World Order means. Now, in a way, this is supposed to be kind of an epilogue. It's not the end, but it is the end of a phase that uh, we've been a part of, a living part of American history. It's not the end of uh, the resistance or the, uh, the uh, patriot movement. It's not the end of the era per se, but it is going to be the end of this particular level of engagement. The other side is sharpening its claws. The fangs are being drawn back. Many different weapons are being arrayed now against the American people because again, consider this, our success demonstrates that as we lift more rocks, there are fewer rocks for the New World Order to hide under. There are fewer masks left intact 
And as each one comes off, the other side will be angered by the fact that we know who they are, we understand completely what they're about, and we can demonstrate it to the world. So a word of warning to all of you that we must act now. Oh, there are many other tools, by the way. One of them that I would recommend, and if you'd like to find out more information, well, you can contact the source of this tape. There are so many, I'm sure, by the time it's out. Uh, Patriot Radio has become one of the key sources for the moment for on-time delivery of data that's in place. And I recommend that, again, you seek out information on how to become your own Patriot broadcaster. That's right. You can be just like Mark, John, Bill, Frank, Kelly, and a half a hundred other Patriots right now who are in the limelight, and you can put your, your, your future on the line, perhaps, but also put your mark on posterity. You can demonstrate to your children what it means to be involved, to be interactive with this nation. I'm fascinated that some people would say they have too much to lose. Well, I think we have a great deal to lose if we let these people win. In fact, I think we'll lose it all. In fact, I would say and go one step farther. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're stupid enough, if you're foolish enough, if you are ignorant enough, to let this Constitution and Bill of Rights we have that have been given to us by the Founding Fathers as inspired through God, then most assuredly your children have every right for the rest of their lives once in bondage to curse your name for the rest of their lives. And they rightfully should do so. In fact, I can imagine that a good portion of the planet will be doing just that because ignore all the fluff and garbage you're seeing on the controlled media. I've seen thousands of letters. I've talked to millions of people and many of them from across other parts of the world. And ladies and gentlemen, I hate to tell you, they're turning and looking at you. You didn't even want this responsibility, I'm sure. Many people would prefer to be off in la-la land uh, we're, we're waiting for, well, the time clock to run out so that they can get to their retirement, so that they can pass on and let somebody else deal with this. Well, I hate to tell you, reality is here and now. It isn't in a computer. It isn't on a video game. It isn't someplace else in a little box where you just simply are very myopic, where you put the, the eye shields on and ignore the rest of reality. It is here today, now. The exciting thing is, well, it's like the old Chinese curse. May you live in interesting times. Yeah, well, I think, I think that we are. And with all of the diverse situations that can develop, we will most assuredly be living in an interesting future. By the way, when we win, here's another problem for all of you who agree that we will. What are you going to do when you win? Do you have a good understanding of the kind of government that you're fighting for? As I said at the very beginning of this tape, nature abhors a vacuum. And one of my biggest concerns is if we are not well versed and prepared to demonstrate this limited republic, then most assuredly something else will attempt to step in. At the Ameri end of, Amer of the American Revolution, remember there were Tories in place in our government, people who were already conniving on ways to bring us back to the King of England. We have no intentions, and I will tell you this you know, personally, directly into your face, no matter who you are, that we have no intentions of throwing somebody out of the king's seat and putting a new king in place. We already have a good form of government, and we aren't going to change it. We're simply going to make sure it's being properly employed. That doesn't mean we throw down the Constitution Bill of Rights. That means we must emulate them. That means we must put them in their proper place of honor. And no single person is uh, the monarch or the tyrant, depending upon your choice of titles, but rather that we have no king but God himself, and that that is our beacon, our guide, well, our footpath. That is what we will follow. And that path is very narrow, by the way. Remember that in your victory, well, people have a tendency to get a little carried away. And I do challenge you to this also. When we win, ladies and gentlemen, if we're not careful, in less than one generation, we could lose everything we have gained. Do you really want to see that? The only way that we can ensure that this mistake is not made, well, right away, the Founding Fathers would tell you that what you're seeing right now is the very nature of man. To make sure that that doesn't happen, we must make sure that we also have a firm record of history. We want to make sure that we document what it is that's taking place right now. I've seen some books, and I've actually got a few of them sitting here, that were virtually taken off the Internet and are fabrications and fantasy, pure and simple. But they're the books that, if you're not careful, are going to be the reference for the future. Already I have seen this with uh, the controlled media and press assignments that they've been given that you have not seen, that are waiting in the wings so that if the other side does win, just as Orwell said, they will take everything else that you've been a part of and throw it into the black memory hole. And what they will replace it with will be whatever they find on that keyboard sitting in front of them. 
to the challenge today, and the challenge now is for you to become that living historical memory. And also when the time comes and we see victory, we don't want to hear about bloody corpses in back streets. We want to bring these perpetrators before the American people. We want to see them properly documented, properly recorded, properly tried, and then appropriately punished. And the guidelines for that punishment are in the Constitution and Bill of Rights. Make no mistake about it. We do have the laws on the books, and we have the capability to enforce them. That is what this nation is all about. And it is also to be a shining example for your children. How many people have I heard, and if this is now, even under much milder conditions, who are afraid or unwilling to go to jury duty? I have waited all of my life to go on jury duty. I have been, I have been a voter for as long as I could vote. And yet you know that not, do you know that not once have I ever been called to jury duty? Of course, I don't think they'd like me on jury duty. I will say that. I'd be the first to admit it. But with that in mind, there are so many other tasks, if you're not called, that you can find to do. One of the important tasks that's been picked up by many Americans in Michigan, uh, in Kansas, Texas, uh, Nevada, is to take the nation back at the county and at the township level. Some people say, well, that's not possible. Well, remember something about warfare. If your enemy also is unwilling to defend something, then you should be more than willing to take it as needed. And that includes the fact that they have abandoned some of the tools thinking that they will not be used. Township government is one of those options. All of the New World Order laws, everything that you see, some that we've demonstrated here today, is enforced in one way and one way only, by going down to the local level and throwing it in your face. So here's the chance for you to change part of the nation now. Find a task that meets your decision. If you're willing to directly get involved in the militia, do it. If you're willing to get involved in government, by all means, do it. But whatever you're going to do, do it now. The time is limited. We have one opportunity to preserve our freedom, one opportunity to make sure that our children remain free and our children's children's children remain free. This is not the end, although this is simply one of many that are going to be worked at this time. This is the beginning, ladies and gentlemen, of a great new effort and a new era of freedom for America. Well, I'm going to close with, of course, words that you've heard many times before echoed across halls and in basements and across the airwaves of America. But I hope that it sinks in now because with what we've shown you, and there's so much more that we can, they mean so much both to myself, my family, and hopefully to my, my posterity when the time comes. God bless the Republic. Death to the New World Order. We shall prevail. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Good night. Let me show.